get ready for a quick quest guide for the Lunar Diplomacy quest, in which the main rewards for completing are access to the Lunar Spellbook and Lunar Equipment, access to the Astral Altar, a Seal of Passage that's required for talking to anyone on Lunar Isle, 5000 Magic and Rune Crafting experience, and 2 quest points. In terms of quest requirements, you'll need to have completed the Fremnic Trials, Shiloh Village, Lost City, and Rune Mysteries quests. You'll also need to have level 65 magic, 61 crafting, 60 mining, 55 woodcutting, 49 fire making, 40 defense, and 5 herb lore. So there are lots of requirements here. Additionally, you're also going to need lots of items, including around 1000 coins, which is more than you need but it's good to bring extra, a tinderbox, a hammer, a pestle and mortar, a spade, a decent axe, a decent pickaxe, and side note, I'm bringing rune for both, as well as a complete bullseye lantern. You will also need a draman staff, a guam leaf, a marantil, and an elemental talisman or tiara. Alternatively, you can bring air, water, earth, and fire talismans or tiaras, but the elemental ones do the same job and only take one inventory space. When it comes to recommended items, I'd suggest three stamina potions to help you with all the running around, as well as armor and a weapon to kill around four, but potentially quite a few more level 111 suquas. These monsters are safe spottable, so I'll be bringing magic runes and equipment, and it can also help to have some magic runes to use with your lunar staff and armor when fighting the level 79 me boss. You'll also want quite a bit of food. I'd suggest around 20 to 30 pieces. This will be for running past and defeating Suquas, for healing throughout some of the tests you'll need to complete in the dream world, and for fighting the level 79 me. As there's an agility test and lots of running around during this quest, I'll be using summer pies for it. Now you'll also want quite a few teleports. Firstly, you will want two teleports to Relica. I've moved my house there and will simply be using teleports to my house, but know that you can also use nightmare zone points to buy scrolls of redirection to turn teleports to your house into Relica teleports. Other options are an enchanted liar, Fremenic sea boots, or even Camelot teleports, which will then involve a bit more running. You're also going to need teleports to all four of the elemental altars. I'll be using a ring of the elements that I've charged up with elemental and lore runes. This is pretty expensive and is currently around a mil, but you can uncharge it and then resell it after the quest. Alternatively, you can bring a charged skills necklace, a charged ring of dueling, a charged amulet of glory, and a lumberyard teleport scroll, which will help you to fast travel to each of the four elemental altars. You'll also need at least three empty inventory spots at the quest start, and if your inventory is overflowing, then know that you'll have easy access to a bank on Lunar Isle, and I'd suggest banking excess stamina potions as a starting point. Now you can begin this quest in Northwestern Relica at the end of the most western dock. Here you'll find Loka Sea Runner, or Luka Sea Runner who you will want to talk to and eventually ask, you've been away from these parts a while, before following up this question with, why did you leave? And after skipping through a heap more dialogue, you'll then want to select yes to officially begin the quest before going through the rest of the chat. Next, you'll want to run southeast into the long hall and speak to Brunt the Chieftain. Ask about a seal of passage and after a bit of chatter, Brunt will hand you one. Note that if you lose this seal from whatever means, then you can speak to Brunt again for a replacement. Also always, and I mean always, keep this seal in your inventory or worn during this quest at all times. Otherwise, chatting to anyone without it on Lunar Isle will see you teleported off the island. Now return back to Lokar Sea Runner to your northwest and speak to him, before saying, Arr, yar, let's be on our way, yar. And after space barring through some rather funny dialogue, you'll be transported to the Pirate's Cove. After arriving, climb up the ladder to your north, and then another just to your northeast, which leads back south, and after the climb, go on the boat to your east. Find and talk to Captain Bentley on the ship before saying, can we sail to Lunar Isle now? After which, you'll attempt to sail on over with a warning to keep your seal of passage on you at all times, before then realizing that the ship hasn't moved at all. Speak to Captain Bentley again and skip through the dialogue whereby you'll once again sail in a circle around the Pirate's Cove. 
Afterwards, it's time to chat with lots of ship peoples and know that you'll need to talk to them in this exact order. Firstly, go through the door to your south before climbing down one of the two ladders to go below deck and then going to the southwestern room. Talk to Bird's Eye Jack and then skip through the hilariously passive aggressive conversation. Afterwards, return back to Captain Bentley at the main deck and speak to him before saying, perhaps it's the navigator's fault, before skipping through some more chat. Then return back down below deck and into the southwestern room before speaking to Bird's Eye Jack again and skipping through a long chat whereby he suggests that magic could be the cause of the messed up navigation. Now head back up the ladder to your north and then go all the way to the very north of the ship and head through two doors before speaking to Eagle Eye Schultz and skipping through the chat. Next go south on the ship before going up a ladder onto the high area with a wheel and then speak to the cabin boy and space bar through the chat. Afterwards, go down two ladders before running north and then going down a third ladder before running all the way south and talking to Beefy Burns before going through all of the chat dialogue with him. Then you will need to return back all the way to where you just were. And near the cabin boy that you spoke to previously, you'll find Lecherous Lee. Talk to him and space bar through the chat. Afterwards, go down one ladder and then go through two doors to the southern area of the ship. Talk to the first mate Davy boy and go through all of the chat, whereby the cabin boy starts to look rather suspicious. Then go back up one of the ladders to your north and once again chat to the cabin boy, who will reveal that a moon clan lady had him put symbols on the ship that can only be seen in a certain light. He will then hand you a bullseye lantern and an emerald lens. The lantern he provides you with has no oil though, so instead use the lens on the one that you brought to make an emerald lantern, and afterwards light it with your tinderbox. Note that if you lose the lens then you can talk to the cabin boy for a new one. Now use the lantern on the cannon to your southeast to reveal a symbol and then select to rub it away. Afterwards go down the ladder and run into the most southern room. Use the lantern on the northwestern wall chart and then select to rub it away. Now climb the stairs just to your north before running all the way north and down another set of stairs to the lowest part of the ship. Use the lantern on the chest to your northwest and then rub away the symbol. Then go all the way south on the lowest floor back to Beefy Burns. Use your lantern on the tall crate just to the east of the cooking range and rub it away. And afterwards a tad north you will see a support pillar. Use your lantern on the support pillar and rub away the final symbol. Once you've rubbed away all five of the symbols you'll want to return back up two floors to the main area where you'll want to speak to Captain Bentley. Skip through the chat and with the jinx gone you'll arrive at Lunar Isle. After arriving, run a bit south and climb down the ladder, before running a bit west and climbing down another ladder. Now run northwest into the city's gates, and upon arrival you'll get a small cutscene that gives you a cute overview of the city. Head into the bank just northwest and make sure you're ready to kill a couple of level 111 Suquas, and know that these can be safe spotted. You'll also want about 3 empty inventory spaces for this as well, and know that you can drop off your emerald lantern as you'll no longer need it. Afterwards run right back out and then travel to the southeastern area of Lunar Isle where you'll find the Oneromancer. Talk to her and skip through a relatively long chat with her. Once this finishes up you'll want to defeat a few Suquas nearby and you can kill these while using the nearby ice trunks as a safe spot. You will want to pick up the hides that they drop as well as one Suqua tooth. The tooth has about a 1 in 2 drop rate and it's your prime objective. Once you have the tooth you can stop killing the Suquas at this stage, but you will still want to collect the hides that they drop up to a total of 4. You won't be needing any more than 4 though. Side note I killed one more than I needed to at this stage just so that I could show you the safe spot a bit better. Once you have all the drops that you need, run back northwest into the city and make sure you have one free inventory spot. Then go through a little gap in the fence above the bank before going a bit west whereby you'll see a small house walking on chicken legs. Select to go in inside the house and here you will find Baba Yaga. Talk to her and say, the Oneromancer told me you may be able to help, after which you'll be given an empty vial. Exit the chicken house and then run south around the fence and into the building west of the bank. Use your vial on the water source to fill it up, then use your guam leaf on the vial to get a guam vial. 
after, use your marantil on the vial to get a gua ma vial. Then use your suqua tooth on your pestle and mortar to get a ground tooth. And finally, use your ground tooth on the gua ma vial to create a waking sleep vial. After you've made this potion, you'll want to return back southeast to the Oniromancer and talk to her and skip through the chat, whereby she'll take your vial for safekeeping. Now it's time to turn our Draman staff into a lunar staff by using it on the air, fire, water, and earth altars in that specific order. First, use your Ring of the Elements to teleport to the air altar, or alternatively your skills necklace to go to the crafting guild before running east. After arriving, use your air or elemental talisman or wear the appropriate tiara to go inside, and then use the Draman staff on the air altar. Next, use your ring of the elements to teleport to the fire altar, or alternatively your ring of dueling to go to the al Karid PvP arena before running north. After arriving, use your fire or elemental talisman or wear the appropriate tiara to go inside, and then use use your lunar staff part 1 on the fire altar. Now use your ring of the elements to teleport to the water altar, or alternatively your glory to go to Draenor village before running southeast to the water altar within Lumbridge swamp. After arriving, use your water or elemental talisman or wear the appropriate tiara to go inside, and then use your lunar staff part 2 on the water altar. Finally, use your ring of the elements to teleport to the earth altar, or alternatively your lumberyard teleport port scroll before running a tiny bit southeast to the earth altar. After arriving, use your earth or elemental talisman or wear the appropriate tiara to go inside, and then use your lunar staff part 3 on the earth altar to turn it into a lunar staff. Next, teleport to Relica or head back to Relica through whatever means you have. Head back to Lokar Sea Runner at the northwestern dock, and then right click on Lokar Sea Runner and select Pirate's Cove. Head up the ladders and onto the ship before right clicking on Captain Barnaby and selecting Travel to return back to Luna Isle. After you arrive, climb down the ladders before running south back to the Oniromancer and chat to her to hand over the staff for safekeeping. It's now time to make the eight parts of the Luna armor set. Firstly, run all the way to the northeastern corner of the island whereby there's a dungeon sign. Go down into the dungeon and then go south and then a little west, and nearby the gold rocks you'll find stalagmites that you'll want to mine for some lunar ore. You just need one, but you can also take the time to grab three extra here for the Fremenic Exiles quest later on. Now teleport or make your way back to Relica, and to the west of the city will be a furnace and a range. Use your lunar ore on the furnace to get a lunar bar, and then use the lunar bar on an anvil and then select yes to turn it into a lunar helm. After you have your lunar helm, make your way north back to Lokar and then quick travel to the Pirate's Cove before going onto the ship and right clicking travel on Captain Bentley to return back to Lunar Isle. Make your way down the ladders and then run into the city and stop off at the bank, whereby you'll want to deposit any extra lunar ore, as well as your pestle and mortar, your pickaxe, your hammer, and your elemental tiaras and altar teleport methods. Afterwards, run directly west from the bank and in or around the house closest to the outside fence, you'll find Pauline Polaris. Talk to Pauline and afterwards she'll have you guess her name. The answers will appear in random order, but you'll want to select Pauline? After a bit more dialogue, you'll then need to select Jane Blood Hagic Maid. And again, the answers can appear in any order. After you correctly guess her name, she will hand you the Luna Cape. Now run south from whatever her name is as house, where you'll find someone named Meteora. Chat to her and skip through the dialogue whereby you'll learn a Sukwa has stolen her tiara. Now run northeast and outside to the east of the city, there will be Sukwas to your north that you'll be able to safe spot and defeat by simply staying near the fence and out of their attackable range. You will want to continue to defeat them until you receive a special tiara drop which has about a 1 in 2 drop rate, and also until you have 4 Sukwa hides in total. I got a bit unlucky as my first drop completely bugged out and then it took me another 4 kills in order to get the tiara, but your experience will hopefully be a bit faster. After you have the tiara, return back to Meteora and talk to her, and after a short chat she will trade you the special tiara for a lunar amulet. Now make sure you have your 4 Sukwa hides and then run northeast into or near the Close shop. Start by trading with Rime Sir Salas and purchasing a needle and two pieces of thread. And after you have these, then chat to Rime and ask, You know the ceremonial clothes, 
before skipping through the rest of the chat. Afterwards, talk to Rime once again and again ask, you know the ceremonial clothes, and then skip through some chat before eventually saying, that seems like a fair deal, and paying 400 coins to have your four hides tanned. Now use your needle on each of your four hides and choose to make one lunar torso, one lunar trousers, one lunar gloves, and one lunar boots. Afterwards, drop the needle and thread as you won't need it anymore. Next, head outside of the shop and go to the middle of the city whereby you'll find Celine. Chat to her and say, I'm looking for a ring, before going through the rest of the chat. Next, run east out of the city and then run southeast and go across the bridge as if you're going to the Oniromancer. But after you cross the bridge, change your direction and run west until you see some blue flowers once you're nearby the western edge of the island. Stand on them and then use your spade to dig in order to get a lunar ring before selecting to continue. And after you have the ring in your inventory, you can then drop your spade. Now run a fair ways east and you'll want to go all the way back to the Oniromancer. Talk to the Oniromancer and spacebar through the chat whereby one by one she will take all of your lunar equipment. And after she's done this she'll give it all back to you with the addition of your waking sleep vial and some kindling. Now wear all of the lunar equipment and nothing else and then run northwest back to the bank within the city. Here at the bank it's time to do a bit of an inventory refresh. Deposit your coins as well as any weapons and armor besides your lunar equipment but make sure to keep wearing all all of your lunar equipment. You will want to keep your waking sleep vial and your kindling on you as well. Additionally, keep your tinderbox, your axe, and very importantly, your seal of passage. Ensure that you have runes for combat spells using a lunar staff which offers no free runes and also bring along a decent amount of food of which I'll be bringing around 16 summer pies. Also ensure that you have 4 free inventory spaces. Now run west and go into the large room within the city that has a ceremonial brazier inside. Now use your waking sleep vial on your kindling to get some soaked kindling, and then use your tinderbox on the ceremonial brazier to light it. Now make sure you actually have some time and won't need to log out anytime soon. I would say you need about 30 to 40 minutes tops. And after you're ready to commit to finishing the quest, then use your soaked kindling on the ceremonial brazier to teleport into the dream world. Note that you don't want to read the book in the middle or you'll be teleported out. And if you leave or log out, then you'll need to get more kindling from the Oniromancer and also make a new waking sleep potion to be able to get back here. So ideally do this all in one go. Now talk to the ethereal man or woman walking around close by and skip through the chat. Afterwards, you'll want to pay attention to the six colors platforms around the perimeter of the area. These lead to various challenges that you'll need to overcome. Firstly, take the eastern platform that I feel is a pale green colour, kind of, which brings you to an agility race challenge. Eat a half of a summer pie to boost your agility level and then chat to the ethereal expert and skip through the dialogue before selecting OK to take him on in a race. You will need to take the windy path filled with hurdle obstacles, and the easiest way to jump over them is by clicking on the orbs to either side. If you fail on these, you'll take 8 damage, and as the animation is super slow, you'll also lose a lot of ground, so much so that if you fail a total of 3 times, you'll be guaranteed to lose, and so it's best to just stop attempting the hurdles and losing more health in this situation. If you lose, you can simply restart the race and try again, and I will flag that I got very lucky to pass this on my first attempt here, as on my try trial run I failed like 7 times first with the same agility level. But in short, just keep racing until you win. After you win, you'll be teleported back to the main dream world area. Talk to the ethereal man and skip through the chat, and then drop food if needed to ensure that you have 4 free inventory spaces. Afterwards, go and stand on the dark blue platform to the north, to be transported to another challenge. Now talk to the ethereal perceptive and select OK, let's go, to start the woodcutting competition. Here you will just need to run west and cut down the dream trees, with each tree giving you one log. After you've cut down the four trees, go and add them to your pile in the center and then repeat. You need to add 20 logs to your pile faster than the ethereal person. It will take you a little bit of time, but with a room axe or better it should be a relatively easy win for you as your opponent is pretty slow. After you win then you'll get plonked back in the center and you'll want to chat to the ethereal man again and skip through the dialogue. Now go and step on the northwestern platform and when you make it to the next stage go and chat to the ethereal guide. 
Talk to him and then skip through the dialogue. Now rotate your camera to face south whereby you'll see a heap of dream puffs. There is a path that you can take to the end that will never change, but stepping on the wrong path will see you fall through. So it's kind of like a memory game to get to the other side. I'll pop a grid up on screen that you can screenshot and then in paint or using the edit tool, what you'll want to do is just mark in which of the tiles are correct once you step on them. The animations here are rather long so it can take a while to find your way through to the end, but at least by keeping track of your steps you can't really go too wrong, and eventually you'll be able to make it to the end. Side note you won't lose any health by falling. Once you've done this then you'll be teleported back to the main area whereby you'll want to speak to the ethereal man again and skip through the dialogue. Now go southeast and step on the purple platform, whereby you'll be teleported to a small space with a bunch of floating numbers. Talk to the ethereal number raider who will pump out a heap of random numbers, and after the chat is done a sequence will appear in your chat box. You'll be given some numbers that form part of a sequence, and you will then need to select the next two numbers in that sequence by touching the corresponding floating numbers. There's a long range of sequences that you can be given, so I'll pop them up on screen now, though also feel free to just try your hand at figuring them out yourself as they're not ridiculously challenging or anything. You will need to complete 5 number sequence challenges in total, after which you'll be teleported back to the area with the ethereal man who you'll want to talk to and skip through the chat with. Afterwards return back southeast and take the bright blue platform, which will bring you to a place filled with musical notes. Open up your emotes panel and then talk to the ethereal mimic and after some chatter select suppose I may as well have a go, in order to take on the challenge. Here the mimic will perform an emote that you then need to perform back. After this he will teleport, and you will then need to click on him to get him to do another emote, which you then need to once again copy back. Continue to do this until you've gotten about 5 emotes correct, after which you'll be notified that you passed the challenge and you'll be sent back to the main area of the dream world. Once there, talk to the ethereal man and again spacebar through the chat with him. Once this is done, run southwest and step on the green platform to arrive at the 6th challenge whereby there'll be a bunch of dice all along the platform. Talk to the ethereal fluke and spacebar through the dialogue, after which he will spit out a number. Note that the number given can range from 12 all the way to 30 at random. You will then need to make the 6 dice add up to the number, but there's a small catch. Each dice can only roll 2 of the 6 numbers. The two dice along the western edge can only roll to be either a 2 or a 5. The two dice in the middle of the room can only roll to be a 1 or a 6. And then the two dice along the eastern edge can only roll to be a 3 or a 4. I'll also pop up a list of correct outcomes on screen which should help for if you're struggling or you just want a bit of an easier time. After you correctly make the numbers add up to the total that was told to you, the dice will all reset and you'll be given an additional number. This will continue continue until you've arranged the dice to correctly add up to the numbers given 5 times. After you've correctly solved the dice addition challenge 5 times, you'll be sent back to the main dream world area. And now you just have the final challenge to go. Now make sure you have a spell selected and get ready for a relatively simple fight, before talking to the ethereal man and once more skipping through the dialogue, and then say, of course I'm ready to take on the final challenge of facing a level 79 me. You'll be teleported to a new realm for this fight, and the me only attacks with melee while also teleporting you and themselves around the room. Provided that you're attacking with magic you can pretty easily keep your distance from him and use the gaps in the floor to help safe spot the fight. But really he has very low health and isn't all too hard to defeat in the slightest, so really you should be perfectly okay to make quick work of this considering the quest requirements. After you defeat me, you'll be teleported back to the main area, talk to the ethereal man and go through the chat, after which you'll want to use the lectern thing in the middle of the area and select read my life, and follow this up by saying yes, to return back to reality. Reality. Now run east and after you're outside the village run southeast, all the way back to the Onira Mansa at the southeastern area of the island chat to her. Skip through the dialogue and bam, quest complete. You'll be awarded access to the lunar spellbook and lunar equipment, access to the astral altar, a seal of passage that's required for talking to anyone on Lunar Isle, 5000 magic and 5000 runecrafting experience, and 2 quest points. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next quest!